Attics and Barker Dams and Reservoirs Dam Safety Program. More than a half century ago, in response to devastating floods that occurred in Houston in 1929 and 1935, the Army Corps of Engineers began construction of attics and Barker dams in what was then undeveloped areas in far west Harris and east Fort Bend counties. This undertaking was a milestone in a long-standing partnership between the Galveston District Army Corps of Engineers, which was established in Galveston in 1880, and the Greater Houston community and our commitment to the safety and well-being of our local communities. Located near the intersection of I-10 and State Highway 6, in an area considered to be in the upper watershed of Buffalo Bayou, Attics and Barker provide flood damage reduction along Buffalo Bayou, downstream of the reservoirs and through the center of the city of Houston. The original construction cost of just over $10 million is small when compared to the considerable savings in damage prevention which has resulted. Attics and Barker dams were built in the 1940s to prevent flood damages to Houston and downtown Houston and they have served the community quite well. They've uh, prevented about five billion dollars of damages to Houston and just last year alone uh, in the storm event that occurred last year over 900 million dollars of, of damages were prevented. Moreover, countless lives have been saved, historical treasures preserved, and Houston has prospered and grown into the fourth largest city in the nation. But like much of our national infrastructure, Attics and Barker have been around a long time. The Army Corps of Engineers continually inspects all of its dams nationwide under its dam safety program, a program that shows our commitment to protecting lives, property, and the environment by ensuring that all dams are designed, constructed, operated and maintained as safely and effectively as possible. The Corps of Engineers has always maintained a robust dam safety program and as we continue on in the future we, we look at a number of ways we can continue to improve upon our record of dam safety. Uh, the first step of course is to maintain a, a aggressive inspection program. We want to make sure that if there are any problems, structural problems, uh, that evolve along the dam structure, uh, that we notice those in early and so that we can take aggressive measures to, to address those, those potential issues on the dam structure. Uh, in addition, we're also looking at ways that perhaps in, in the design of the dams we can improve uh, the, the structure so that we can even uh, better uh, protect uh, the the populations around Houston and for at higher, uh, for, for greater flood events. The dam safety program is currently transitioning to a program that combines dam safety risk and potential consequences when making decisions about Corps of Engineer dams. As part of this transition, Attics and Barker have undergone a recent evaluation, as have all Corps of Engineers dams nationwide. Two areas of concern the outlet structures and the ends of the dam were identified. By combining these two areas of concern with the potential consequences to the city of Houston should there be a dam failure, Attics and Barker have been designated as extremely high risk. This does not mean that Attics and Barker are in imminent danger of failing. First of all, they are also reservoirs which retain rainwater and they are dry much of the time. Secondly, Attics and Barker are continually monitored and inspected to ensure their structural integrity. But the fact is that the Houston metropolitan area is the nation's fourth largest, so it is obvious that any dam safety issues here could have a higher risk of impact on people and property than most other dams in rural or smaller urban areas. This designation actually increases the safety of the dams because funding for repairs and studies for Attics and Barker moves up to the front of the line, and all actions are expedited. What this does mean is that the risks are actually lower now than they were before last year's storm. And we will continue to address those risks. And in fact, the, the discovery of, of these issues has led to uh, higher priority of funding for, uh, for us to continue doing maintenance and repairs on the dams and to to do our uh, future uh, dam safety modification studies where we will study other alternatives for repairs. 
Addicks and Barker Dams and Reservoirs were first conceived back in the 1930s in response to two floods that occurred in Houston in 1929 and 1935. During those floods, there was uh, second story water in some parts of downtown Houston. There was a need for a project that would help control some of these floods. Harris County Flood Control District and the Corps of Engineers came together and developed the Buffalo Bayon Tributary Flood Control Project, which Addicts and Barker are both part of. In the original plan, uh, the uh, dams would be constructed up on the upper uh, watershed of Buffalo Bayon and there was going to be a bypass channel that would carry the waters away from the reservoirs and away from Buffalo Bayou around downtown all the way to Galveston Bay. Unfortunately, that channel was not built, forcing us to gate the conduits or the tunnels that discharge water from the dam and from the reservoirs. It, with increased development downstream has resulted in decreased releases or flows out of the reservoirs and with increased development upstream has uh, resulted in increased pools, more frequent pools for a longer period of time, uh, forcing quite a bit of change in the way Addicts and Barker are operated and maintained today. Addicts and Barker have protected downtown Houston and the greater metropolitan area, and it is our intent to continue to do just that. To better understand the current situation with Addicts and Barker, Let's take a moment to review the operations of the dams. The Addicts and Barker uh, reservoirs work by uh, collecting rainfall, which falls into the Addicts and Barker watersheds, and pounding that rainfall uh, to, to prevent flooding downstream along the Buffalo Bayou uh, uh, corridor. Uh, by doing that, um, we prevent flood damage along Buffalo Bayou protect those residents from flood damages. We accomplish this through the operation of the gates on the dams. Let's talk about how Addicts and Barker dams work for a few minutes. On a normal day, if you go out to Addicts and Barker dams, you will see that the gates on the dams are left open to pass the normal flow of water down Buffalo Byron tributaries right on through the middle of town. However, when it starts raining and it appears that flooding may occur, we will close the dam and start collecting those storm waters behind the dams. After the hazard of flooding has passed, we will go back, open the dams up, and start releasing water at a, at a non-damaging control rate down the bios. It gets a little trickier if we have water in the reservoirs and a storm is approaching. We must, must close Addicts and Barker dams in advance of the approaching storm to make sure there's plenty of room in Buffalo Bio for Mother, Mother Nature's rainfall. Again, after the storm has passed, we will resume the releases from Addicts and Barker Dam and we'll continue them until the reservoirs are empty. The dramatic changes to the areas downstream of Addicts and Barker Dams have also led to large changes in the water control structures of both dams and the way they are operated. At the time of original construction, only one of the five conduits that carries the floodwaters through the dams was gated on each dam. This allowed a release of approximately 15,000 cubic feet of water per second to flow from the reservoirs down Buffalo Bayou. By the early 1960s, the Corps had gated all the conduits on Attics and Barker dams and releases were reduced to 6,000 cubic feet per second. In the 1970s, the releases were further reduced to release of 2,000 cubic feet per second from the reservoirs as a result of the increased development along Buffalo Bayou downstream of the dams. The area upstream of the Attics and Barker Reservoirs, or the watershed, has also experienced a dramatic increase in development. What was once farmland in the 1940s is now subdivisions and commercial development. Some of the subdivisions abutting or close to the back property lines of the reservoirs have encroached into areas that could possibly be flooded by the dams. These homes are subject to flooding should it become necessary to impound a very large pool behind Attics and Barker dams. Well, the outflow regulations of Attics and Barker have, have been reduced over time. Uh, and this has primarily been as a result of, of, in, of encroachment, population encroachment. When the dams were originally constructed, 
most of the upstream popula or the upstream areas weren't unpopulated. In fact, uh, they were mainly agricultural areas. And the, in the downstream area along Buffalo Bayou was also significantly less populated. But over time, the population growth of Houston, as well as West Houston, uh, has continued to, to grow and evolve. And so that has forced us to constrain our outflow regulations to uh, make sure that we maintain uh, the safety of the folks downstream. Let's take a look at two concerns that were raised by a recent evaluation. First, the outlet structures. The issues with the outlet structures are primarily associated with the foundation material beneath the conduits. This material is very fine-grained sand and is very susceptible to erosion. The dams were originally designed and constructed as storm water detention basins, basically a large version of the detention basins you see all over town behind large shopping centers. There has been tremendous amounts of development occur both upstream and downstream of Attics and Barker dams. Uh, what this means is that we've had to maintain pools of water for a much longer period of time. The, the dams were never built to maintain pools for an extended period of time. Originally they were built with no, no gates. We've had to add gates to minimize the flow that, that goes down the bayou to prevent damages. And what, what that has resulted in is pools of water for longer periods of time. This has resulted in some seepage issues underneath the conduits since they were never really designed to, maintain, to uh, hold a pool of water. In the fall of 2008, as part of our ongoing inspection program, we used ground penetrating radar to check the integrity of the foundation beneath the conduits and found what looked like potential voids. We engaged the services of an architectural engineer and were in the process of completing plans and specifications for a contract to fill these voids. But a large rain event over the watersheds filled attics to the second highest pool of record and Barker to the seventh highest pool of record. Because of this rain event, we awarded an urgent and compelling contract to a local contractor and began filling the voids immediately using a polyurethane material. During the course of this work, we were able to confirm that there were voids under the conduits. We have recently awarded a second contract to confirm the adequacy of this first void filling effort, as well as fill any remaining voids and install inspection plugs that can be used to track the integrity of the foundation in the future. This work should be complete in the very near future. We are also planning uh, further repairs to the uh, conduits to build a filter, what we call a filter wrap, around the conduits. And, and the purpose of that is to, to, um, to minimize um, loss of uh, the fine grained soils that are underneath the, the conduits that have created those voids. And so that, that's uh, another uh, project that we have planned for the very near future. Concurrently with doing these immediate repairs, the Corps is conducting a dam safety modification study, which will look at all long-term alternatives to address any issues associated with the dams. This study is expected to be completed in about three years. The second area of concern with the dams are the ends, where the dam embankments tie into the natural ground. These are also the areas where the dam embankment is lower and is armored with concrete. The lowered, armored embankment is designed as an uncontrolled spillway. Following a huge rainfall event or a large rainfall event on top of a full reservoir, the intention of this uncontrolled spillway is to allow water to safely flow over and out of the reservoir, thus preventing overtopping and catastrophic failure of the dam. The concerns associated with this are how this embankment section would perform if it were ever used and where the water would go after it left the reservoir. Another concern is the elevation of the natural ground that the embankment ties into. The natural ground is at a lower elevation, so the water will flow over the natural ground before it goes over the uncontrolled spillway. These issues are being addressed in the dam safety modification study. Like all organizations, the Corps of Engineers is also a planning organization. We began a study process for Attics and Barker with our plan for addressing immediate repair needs at the dams. 
This plan includes filling the voids under the conduits and installing a filter at the conduits, as well as updating our inundation maps and our emergency action plan. This work is all underway. We are also undergoing a risk analysis of the dams, which will confirm the areas we are focusing on and will describe the risk associated with these areas. Also underway is the dam safety modification study mentioned earlier. This study is being conducted by a team of engineers, planners, environmentalists, and economists, and should take about three years to complete. It will be a comprehensive look at the issues and alternatives for addressing these issues and the effectiveness of each one. The study will also include an independent external peer review by engineers and scientists from outside the Corps of Engineers. Throughout this process, the Corps is committed to your safety and is urgently addressing issues that need immediate attention with long-term solutions to follow the formal study process. We are doing and will continue to do everything possible to keep you safe, just as we have done throughout the life of Attucks and Barker Dams. The face of Attucks and Barker to many Houstonians is not a reservoir or a dam, but a park or a recreation area. Much of the year, both of the reservoirs remain dry. So as an additional benefit to the communities, the Corps has made these lands available to the city of Houston, Harris County Precinct 3, and Fort Bend County for the development of recreation facilities. They've developed over the years walking trails through a great deal of the land that they use for Bear Creek Park. And most recently, one of the biggest hits with the public is the creation of dog parks, where we actually have land that they've turned into uh, activity areas for the community and uh, pet owners and their pets to be able to use the areas for their dogs. With the continued development of lands outside the reservoirs, the value of undeveloped lands within the reservoirs continue to grow. We realize the importance of these natural resources to our community and work diligently to balance the development of recreational facilities within the reservoirs with the protection of the natural resources. The Corps of Engineers has been a part of the greater Houston community for more than a century. Everything we do, every action we take, Every mission we accomplish, every project we build is for the good of America's citizens. Attucks and Barker Reservoirs were born out of the devastating floods in the early part of the 20th century and continue to this day to protect the citizens of Houston. Our commitment to you is to do everything in our power to continue that protection and to prove our Corps of Engineers motto of building strong, 